हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी बी टॉकिंग अबाउट फिनिश लाइंस इन टूथ प्रिपरेशन और फिनिश लाइंस इन एफपीडी नाउ व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज अ फिनिश लाइन द फिनिश लाइन इज द जंक्शन ऑफ द प्रिपेयर्ड एंड अनप्रिपेयर्ड टूथ स्ट्रक्चर विद द मार्जिन ऑफ अ रेस्टोरेटिव मटेरियल नाउ लेट अस ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज अ फिनिश लाइन नाउ लेट अस हैव अ लुक एट दिस now when we have a look at this this is my prepared surface a prepared tooth and this is the junction of the prepared and the unprepared tooth structure so basically this is the junction of the prepared and the unprepared so this is my finish line in this case this is my finish line a very simple example of this pen out here now this cap is going to seat onto the pen and cover it so this is going to end on to this line so if we take this as a tooth so this would be the prepared tooth and this would be the junction of the prepared and the unprepared surface now so this is going to be the finish line when it comes to a cap now out here this is the finish line supposing this is the whole tooth so this is my finish line now moving on to the various types of finish lines finish lines can basically be classified on different types on the basis of where they are placed the supra gingival sub gingival or equi gingival now how do we decide and what are these types now supra gingival finish line as the name suggests is the one that is above the gingiva as it is in this case this is the supra gingival finish line it is best when it comes to hygiene maintenance best when it comes to the inspection by a doctor or best when it comes to inspection by the patient himself because it is because of its location it is located above on to the tooth surface of the gingiva on the on to the tooth surface and does is not covered by the gingiva so it is the best but the problem is when you place a crown on top of a supra gingival finish line it is going to appear as if some part of the tooth is not covered with the crown so either the shade has to match very nicely or the patient it has to be out of the aesthetic zone so that the patient does not feel odd about it next is the sub gingival finish line the sub gingival finish line as the name suggests is below the gingival crest below the gingival crest as in somewhere below the gingival crest and not visible when it comes to the naked eye now where do you give this you give this when you have cervical caries or you give this when you have a very high risk aesthetic restoration wherein the finish line need not be visible but there is there are problems associated with this sort of a finish line now when you have this sort of a finish line the patient is not able to see the margins therefore he is not able to maintain the margins at the same time once he is not able to maintain the margins there are very high chances that a finish line may, may cause the le may cause leak may become the area for leakage in a crown so that becomes a problem now the next is the equi gingival finish line the equi gingival finish line as the name suggest again is the one that is at the level of the gingival crest these equi gingival finish <coughs> lines are the best and supposed and the most commonly followed in normal clinical practice so they are they can be easily maintained also and they are inspectable by the doctor and can be maintained by the patient always remember this first of all why exactly are finish lines important finish lines are important because since this point out here is going to be my junction of my restoration whatever the restoration is and the unprepared tooth and the, it is the crown that is that i'm going to place is going to be luted into the onto the tooth so there is some amount of some amount of the cement that is going to be there now ideal sense there should be no gap between the finish line and my prepared tooth and the luted cement has to be inside the crown but in case if there is any slightest of 
लीकेज और मिसफिट ऑफ द क्राउन एंड दे सम अमाउंट ऑफ मिसफिट ऑफ द क्राउन एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ द टूथ और द सीमेंट इज एक्सपोज एंड द फिनिश लाइन डज नॉट स्नगली फिट इन टू द टूथ or not the finish line does not snugly fit the crown does not snugly fit onto the tooth then some amount of luting cement is going to be exposed in the mouth and all luting cements are dissolvable in the mouth when it comes to water or saliva although over a period of years but then that area of defect is going to act as my area of secondary infection or micro leakage and cause damage to the tooth structure inside the crown so that is the reason why finish lines need to be cleansable by the patient and the fit of the crown has to be good on to the finish lines now moving on to the another classification of finish line the earlier one was based on the placement of the finish line now this is based on the configuration or the anatomy of the finish line it could be chamfer heavy chamfer shoulder shoulder with bevel or knife edge now we'll go go in the detail into each one of these <coughs> even before we go into detail of each one of this now another small note regarding where what finish line to give basically what restoration we are giving decides on what finish line to give in with on what place and where now supposing if we are going in with a metal crown a metal crown requires a chamfer finish line so wherever we have metal coming in as as the finishing material for a crown we require a chamfer we if there is porcelain fused to metal that means there is a metal section and porcelain attached to it we require around 1 to 1.2 mm of space we we actually require either a heavy chamfer or a shoulder the reason being you you need that amount of space to fit in the crown so that the crown is not over extended so a pfm crown basically uh, uh, you need to give a heavy chamfer or a shoulder then when it comes to all ceramic crowns again either a heavy chamfer or a shoulder depending upon the doctor's choice and his clinical judgment a shoulder with bevel generally is given wherein you have onlays inlays and they need to be finished in metal i am talking about metal inlays and onlays if we talk about the ceramic all ceramic inlays and onlays then again you need to go back to your heavy chamfer or shoulder finish lines so metal because it can be finished on the bevel in a thin section so uh, for inlays and on metal inlays and onlays a shoulder with bevel then it comes to the knife edge knife edge is basically a feather edge margin again generally not used but whenever used has to be finished you need to have material like a precious metal alloys wherein that can be finished in very thin sections and would snugly fit into it now let us go into the details of all these finish lines a chamfer finish line is basically a rounded margin is a conservative finish line has a rounded margin and is prepared using a torpedo shaped burr now always remember whatever length whatever width of the burr that you use if when it comes to a chamfer finish line a torpedo shape a torpedo shaped burr whatever shape that we use always half of a torpedo shaped burr if we want a point 3 mm point 3 mm finish line a point 6 mm thick torpedo shaped burr would make a point 3 mm thick finish line because half of my burr is going to be used in making the finish line so it is basically used wherever we need to finish we need to have a finish in metal so that is when a chamfer finish line comes into play now heavy chamfer heavy chamfer is something similar to a chamfer but with more amount of reduction more amount of reduction if you can appreciate in this photograph or the diagram out here this is a chamfer this finish line is a chamfer out here and this is the heavy chamfer 
Now this heavy chamfer, the amount of tooth structure that needs to be reduced has to be more and it is not prepared using a torpedo shaped burr, it is prepared using a round end burr. So a heavy chamfer generally is used when it comes to a PFM or even an all ceramic crown. And the reason why it is used is that it since it has rounded edges, so it tends to reduce the amount of stresses on the ceramic. Now, shoulder. Shoulder is generally the preferred finish line either again for a metal ceramic or an all ceramic restoration but is more aggressive when compared to a heavy chamfer finish line and has to be prepared using a flat end burr. A flat end tapering burr is used when it comes to a shoulder preparation. Now, coming on to shoulder with bevel. A shoulder with bevel, as I have already mentioned, this is the bevel part that you can appreciate. Now, this bevel part, this thin section out here can only be finished in metal. If we use ceramic in this thin section, it is bound to fracture because ceramics work in thicker sections and need bulk for strength. So, metal inlays and metal onlays a shoulder with bevel works perfectly fine because metal can be finished and burnished in thin sections. Now, just a recap of the preparation. Again, a chamfer preparation, a shoulder preparation which is slightly more aggressive and a shoulder with bevel for inlays in cases of metals. Now, moving on to the knife edge marginal edges, they are the, they are the preferred for lingual surface of mandibular molars that are tilted, tilted molars or wherein you have to finish off using, finish off in precious metal alloys and in very thin sections. What burrs are used? Normally tapering fissure burrs are used. But always remember this, these are the least preferred finish lines. The reason being you cannot finish metal you may not be able to I should not be using cannot you may not be able to finish off finish ma the margins of the restoration in such thin sections moreover since the preparation is such less when it comes to a knife edge finish line it may not be reproducible in an impression always remember this if you cannot reproduce your finish line in an impression there is no point making a finish line if you need to make a finish line it has to be reproducible in the in the impression it has to be reproduced in the cast it has to be visibly discernible to the lab person for him to be able to finish it and with a knife edge finish line it is generally not the case so these sort of finish lines are generally not used at all now I hope by this video you would have got an idea of what finish lines are and where all the finish where all all the finish lines are used and how would you be able to choose your own finish line as as uh, when you make your restorations thank you